Welcome, dear readers, to Cover My Ass, where baffling books are reviewed but not read by yours truly. My name is... Uh, K- Kaki. And I'm Kay. And remember, we only judge a book by its cover. And we find ourselves once more amid the towering... Excuse me. Stacks of your library. Libra- yes, that's right. <sighs> There's an awful lot of notes here to, to read. Do we have to do this every episode? Uh, I mean, it's... Traditional, yes. Otherwise, like, our dear readers at home wouldn't know what they're listening to. But you'd think that eventually we'd be able to memorize this and just do oh, the introduction yeah, so easily. But that's that's difficult. Like Some people would be clever and just pre-record it and have the same little tune every time. But no, there's a certain charm to doing it live and have, like having the echoes of the library and a little bit of the uh, useless continuity that we... Uh, ah, po- yes, that's the unnecessary law. Unnecessary law, that's the, the word. Of yes. my elbow. Yeah. Oh, that's a nice tattoo you got there. That one is one of the better written ones on the... <laughs> Most of the ones on my right arm are not so good since I, well, guess I, guess, I wrote them left-handed. Yeah, really especially when you're doing a tattoo thing. That's going to be, like, very difficult. And I, I, Am I the only one who's written, like, the entire script and identity on themselves? I Do think you so, have yes. tattoos? No, it's I just, have tattoos, it's but me. they don't involve the notes for the uh, episodes of our podcast. Okay. I mean, I, I think I could probably have done something much more efficient than actually, like, stenciling this onto my skin, but... Yeah, I suppose you used one of the uh, little... Uh, what are they called? Uh, 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 what's a crunchish pen called in English? Fountain pen. No. A fountain pen has a reservoir. Like a stylus pen. Yeah, one of those, like, old-fashioned little things which we just have Would a you nib the, which you, uh, yeah, which you the, put the, into the a pen. Well. Yeah, the stylus is the thing you hold, and then you've got the nib that you put in there, and then you dip it into the inkwell and you write it. Like, if any of the okay, readers at home I'm knows the, what one of these things is called, please let us know in, in the uh, comments. I, and, and I've got to point out, you're asking the person who has had his memory wiped, like, at, at, I'm counting at least 50 times, and every time that my, that my memory is erased due to contact with the red ink. Yes. Uh, I have to listen to the entire back catalogue again. Now, of course, I'm it's not new bored. for you, so it's I was going to say. Like, yeah, it gives you okay. something to do. It's, it, but so one of the more recent notes that I have here mm-hmm. is last time you said that you were going to investigate where this red ink is coming from. Right. Yes, I was. Um, there is, like, have been some... That sounds like maybe you forgot to do it and you're trying to make it up right well, now. I wouldn't do that. Why no. would I make up something important I mean, that, like, where the red ink is coming from? I have a lot of experience listening to myself now there as has, I'm making stuff up. There so. has been a bit of creeping around in the rafters. And, uh, Ooh. Yes. Uh, you have to, one has to, like, occasionally do maintenance and make sure that uh, the, uh, the maintenance of the library is being uh, taken care of. Right. And I think I have found a little illicit uh, enterprise that uh, Tr- Tristan has been... Uh, working on ah Tristan let me see that is the three raccoons in a trench coat that you well, thought were gnomes uh, housekeeping gnomes yes. and are now uh, and defeated me in the mayoral elections of Librorium exactly, a town made yes. out of and books they, they a- fooled both of us into thinking we were, they were the other by wearing the trench coat and standing on each other's shoulders oh, but I think I they've should, given I up on that. The give me the tattoo pen oh uh, there you go uh, that's the red ink don't tattoo it with red ink You'll I'm never... not it, this is blood okay. this is actual oh, blood that, that, that doesn't work out, it... that doesn't work either for tattoos okay I've got to I've got to do something you can't tattoo yourself with your own blood that doesn't work not with that attitude <laughs> well <laughs> But, uh, yeah, it turns out they've been running a little still in the climate control room. And that's been uh, uh, leaking along the vents. And they've been using some of the red ink for not the right purposes. Okay, but does it have right purposes? Because it seems yeah, to have writing. Like terrible they were, they were using it to fuel the still. They've had a stern talking to, and they're not supposed to do that. Yes, but do they remember? Because if they've been in contact with the red ink... Well, I think they're clever enough not to touch it. And they always wash their hands very well afterwards. That's so true. that's good. I think mean, they've been selling it the booze. Everyone and, should be washing their hands after touching anything anyway. Well, yeah. Yes, but especially in these times. Although you wouldn't know about that because you've been stuck in the library here for the last 94 weeks. Oh, this is episode it, feels 94. Like it, was, it feels like it was just yesterday. Well, that's the good part about the red ink. It's like one of the few good things. Just don't overdo it because we wouldn't want it to become permanent. Okay, but so is the ink tide now over? Can I safely venture out without being dripped upon? You should be able to, like, uh, yeah, not get dripped upon anymore. Like I said, the Tristan's had a, a stern talking to, and they're not to use the red ink anymore, and they're just, oh, well, supposed to huge uh, mop it up and don't run the still. Not with my ink, at least. Then, okay, so I just need to listen to an, our entire back catalogue of 93 episodes, including mm-hmm. this one probably like one more time and then I'll be back up right. to that'll up only to take speak. you what two days if you don't do anything else <laughs> Ooh, it seems like a bit of investment how many podcasts are there which have a back catalogue of 93 episodes <laughs> It's like, I think yeah. we're well ahead of the curve in that one. Like, maybe not in many other things, but at least on that one, we are well ahead of the curve. <laughs> yes, we certainly make it up in volume. Oh, yes, very good. <laughs> That's what I wanted to say. That's a good segue. That leads That's us into, the, yes, the what The Segway Award of 2020. <gasps> really? Well, for at me? least a nomination. I'll still go. take yeah. it. 
a lot of writers put that on their cover. Hugo yes. nominated. Yeah, not mm. for this one. Didn't get it, though, yeah, did that, you? Yeah, that, that too, yes. So what do we have in store for our readers this week? Ah, this week's book is by Bradley Denton, in a Campbell Award nominee. So, yeah, again, didn't win it. <laughs> <laughs> Might not even be for this book. That's just, like, the author. And the book's called Rack and Roll. And it's got a fantastic cover, I think. I liked it, too. I was so glad that you picked this one, because the title is big and bold, and it's in this sort of oiled, chromey font. Yeah, I I'm not sure what kind of... It, it's like got the weird curls in it, and it's kind yeah, of like right. a mix between a serif and a sans serif font. They don't really seem to know where they want to go with that. No, it's definitely sans serif, because it doesn't have the, the, oh, the, the, the serifs. Well, the, 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 the ampersand kind of does, but that might be part of the ampersand itself. So uh, you're right. No, it is part yeah. of the ampersand, because the ampersand is constructed out of the letters E and T for et cetera. Uh, uh, still got it. I've still got yeah, the... Yeah, you do. You don't have the... <laughs> facetious obscura. The book is by Questar, and in an alternate America, the music is the power, and... And the powers pushing us closer and closer to Armageddon. Yes, which we see some depictions of on the cover. Oh, yeah. Because the I central like figure it. is this rocking chick with big hair and a, and a, and a guitar, and she's, and she's jumping up. That's all some serious 80s hair that we've got there. Oh, it's huge. Yep. And, uh, and illuminated by a red moon sun. or sun yeah, planet or behind maybe, her. It might or be a nuclear, nuclear fire alarm. Yes, that's what I was yes. thinking of as well. There's a fantastic tower, or it might even be a spaceship that we see. There is a man or a woman, like, I think it's a man, considering the amount of, I think there's beard hair, so, chained to some posts. Oh, no, he's a drummer. Oh, so no, he's the drummer. Seriously, I thought well, he was, I thought he was chained yet. to posts, but those are nuclear missiles in the back, and he's, he's the drummer, and he's, like, banging the drums. Oh, that's and so I thought cool. He, yeah, I thought he was chained to those posts. But no, no, the chain's no, no. being wielded by the mulleted gentleman. Yes, with, with the big, big earrings, earrings, yeah. And the crop top. And what does and it say on his shirt? It says... Hector or Hacker, maybe. I think it's says Hacker. Rocker? Or Fucker. And they're by... Hacker. Let's go with that. Oh, the Hacker. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. And you've got more big-haired people in the background. Yeah. You've got the keyboardist with a porcupine haircut. And you've got... The I mean, it's Slash in with, a tuxedo, right? On the bass. Oh, yeah, totally. The, yeah, lots of people with more big hair, like the guy with the pipe in his hand. Who's, that's more hippie hair, really, with the, the afro with the band across it. Yes, and I love that. they're kind of fighting with what looks like the riot police or something like that. Yeah, they've got these... Big these bashing. Sort of like steel helmets yeah. and steel visors, which you can't imagine that's very effective. But yeah. they look like pikemen, like knights in armor. Oh, a little bit, yeah. And also sci-fi and also, yeah, riot police. I think, yeah, I think riot police, considering the rest of the book. So I think this is a bashing or something that uh, they're having here. Okay. Uh, and yes, uh, the rocker chick on the uh, front cover is, uh, of course, uh, Lizzie Gil Gilmore. Yeah. That's uh, the heroine of this book, who is letting it rack and roll, really, as in this case. Yes. Now, the, the, it's W-R-A-C-K. So it's not rack as in where you store stuff or, or one's bazoomas, it's, it's W-R-A-K, uh, which I like. I think what, it's when is that ever used? I think it's a reference to wrecking. Like rock and roll, it's a mix between wrecking and rock. Oh, and so it's like a cool neologism. That's what that's what I made out of it. It like, could be I something sometimes, else. I, I used to use it as in racking my brain, and I used to write that with a W, but I've been informed that, that was incorrect because no. it's it's more like the being on the rack, w, oh, okay. where one is being stretched. So you it's know, not it's, it's not like in uh, racking as it's used in brewing when you're basically siphoning off the uh, the stuff that you want from the lees that you don't want, which would also make sense. Like that's you know, a good I'm metaphor. Racking yeah. my brains, like yeah. Yeah, I'm just like taking out the stuff that I want and I'm leaving all the crap behind, which. Uh, if only it was that easy. Yeah, totally. I mean, like, I mean, it would involve uh, sticking a siphon into your head and sucking everything out. So, like, I don't think it would be a very popular procedure. Yikes. Yeah, unless you get a conical brain uh, and then you like, like a, a conical fermenter and then it, the leaves what? just settle to the bottom and you have a special tap under your chin that you can, like... Oh, no. He's out of control. I can't, st <laughs> I can't stop him. I'm pushing the button. It won't stop. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> well, that's a strange sensation. What happened just there? Uh, nothing. Don't worry about it. Okay. Hey, so uh, tell us... Tell how, how does the book the, the book sta the book starts doesn't it? How, this is how's the podcast going so far? Oh, it's great, going great. Right? Yeah, yes. no, we're okay, fantastic. No, good. The podcast starts in a little university pub. The pub? You mean the book? Oh, sorry, the book. Yes, it's well, all sort of blending together already. Like, wow. Yes, a, a, a little university cafe annex bookstore called Madam's Organ. <laughs> yeah, which is uh, in the uh, Miami University of Ohio. I had some questions about that. Like, yeah. that seems like a, a geographical conundrum. It, it, it exists. It's an actual university. There's, there, is a Manny, there is a Miami University of Ohio. No, there's no way I'm that sure that's... That, yeah, no. 
<laughs> I kid you not. <laughs> this world is so cool. Uh, yeah, where we see uh, uh, Lizzie Gilmore yes. uh, about to start her first set. Uh, she's pacing around in the wings, waiting for her and her band uh, to uh, start playing. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's Lizzie and the Gilmore. It's Lizzie and the Gilmore girls, isn't it? Oh, very good. That's I thought a, so too. Lizzie and good, the Gilmore girls. Good job, Bradley yeah, let's, go, let's go with that. Lizzie and the Gilmore girls. <laughs> and they're waiting uh, for their uh, for their turn to, uh, to go on stage at, uh, at Madame's Organ. It's like uh, the other one of the other student bands is playing. It's called Soy Division. It's, ah, a, bun- yes. it's a bunch of uh, vegans and uh, who are uh, <laughs> yes. very much into protest music. And they're especially nervous because in the, in the audience, there's a scout. Ah, yes. They've heard the scuttlebutt that there's a, that there's a scout from the label mm-hmm. out there. And it's rather a famous one that, uh, that she was a fan of when she was a, a young musician, Nellie Wilson. Ah, yes. Whose music has gone a little bit out of favor, but it's still a classic. It was known as uh, Slick Willie, I believe. Yes, that's right. <laughs> yes. uh, curious, curious how that came to pass, but... Yeah. And uh, yeah, like, I mean, he's, he's easy to spot because like he's in the middle of the cloud of uh, weed smoke. He's a bit of a mysterious figure because nobody really knows what he looks like because like nobody's ever seen his face. It's always been shrouded in clouds. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They start the show, they go on and play a fantastic gig, and the crowd loves it. And yeah, they go crazy for their hit song, Treble in Paradise. Oh, It's very shrill. It's, it's awfully shrill. The, yeah. the bass player has nothing to do. And the but drummer is also, basically it's a song where the drummer goes off stage, walks up to the bar, has a pint, waits for them to finish. Like He just sits there, talks to the guys, and he, by the time the guitarist starts his solo, he knows he needs to come back. And finish his beer. And, and right at the end, he just has to, and then that's his part of the song. <laughs> Oh, my dad, who was a rocker, he told me an awful joke, and I apologize in advance, but I'm still going to tell it. What do you call a drummer without a girlfriend? Uh, Homeless. Oh. <laughs> Oh, wow, yeah, no, it's not. Uh, there, there was another one that I heard about. It was like it was a percussionist who was decided like he was uh, he'd had enough of uh, getting um, talked down to by the other mu- musicians. So he walks into a music store and uh, he says, "Okay, I want some other instrument. I want that red saxophone over there and the accordion." And the shopkeeper looks at him and goes, "Okay, you can have the fire extinguisher, but the, but radiator, the radiator stays." stays. Here. <laughs> So, uh, so they're they're impressing the, the the crowd, and none more so than Nellie Wilson, who uh, ah, yes. comes up to them afterwards. Yeah, goes like, "Oh, I like what you're hearing," and uh, the label is very much interested, and, and she's very slick. Yeah, she loves it. Yes, no, she is very slick indeed. I mean, she uh, hands her the, the business card, and it's like, oh yeah, come, that power move. Come see me in my office. You know, it's like I've got an offer to yeah. make you. And it's not like the traditional you would almost expect them to be swept away in the limousine, which uh, Nellie does doesn't that, really. Does, yeah, that's that doesn't seem Nellie's style. Like she's patient, you'll get there in the she end. She kind of just disappears in a cloud of smoke, uh, <laughs> almost like a phantom which has disappeared. Yeah, there's just a faint scent of is that sage? Is it sulfur? I can't quite place. It's more it. like ore- oregano, I think, <laughs> <laughs> or at least that's what it gets sold at at uh, university campuses. The scene cuts to the next day in the book where Lizzie is uh, talking to her uh, to her band members. Yeah, uh, the drummer Louis Armweek. Yes, <laughs> the, the bass player Michael Claxon. <laughs> <laughs> yes, clacks on, clacks off. <laughs> That's his thing because he, like, he's extremely punctual, but he doesn't show up for sound check. Anyone can pluck that bass. He's just like, yeah, whatever. It's he like, just shows up exactly for the gig and the practice, and yeah. then he's out. Clacks on, clacks yeah. off. Lizzie plays the guitar, and that's pretty much it. Uh, it's a very good trio. It works like that. Yeah, yeah. they get some session dudes in. Whatever, whatever. Yeah. I mean, it's university. Everybody wants a gig, so it's it's not very difficult to get someone to come in and sit in. But I thought it was quite cool, by the way, the that all her, all her band members are male, but they're all still calling themselves the Gilmore Girls because yeah, it just alliterates I mean, it's better. Like yeah, it, that's and how it's it works. And it's kind of the rock thing. And she is yeah, she's she's clearly the star of the uh, the driving force behind the band. So yeah, look, like having a little sit and there's like the, the televisions going on and it it seems that there's a bit of a time of political turmoil in the uh, uh, yes. in the world. There's an upcoming election. There's there's a few things going on where uh, the uh, the current president of the uh, of the United States, uh, a man by the name of Tony Blyer. <laughs> Is, uh, Appropriately named, yes, very much so. Is the he's the incumbent, and uh, he's having a hard time defending himself against his his challenger, who's never actually named in the book. She's only known as the Tin Lady. Yeah, I thought it was so sinister. It was. It's a little bit. It's also a little bit weak, but the t- yeah. <laughs> It has a very low melting point. It's uh, yes, if it's thin enough, like you can bend it between your fingers. And yeah, you can hammer it. It's very easy to work. But there's a lot of literary antecedents for the tin crown, like suggesting the, no. the monarchy from poverty and oh yeah, uh, I suppose uh, power systems at various class yeah. levels. The Tin Man. 
the, uh, yeah, uh, which I once saw in a, in a, I think it was a sci-fi channel riff on on the Land of Oz. The Tin Man was a, a private detective who had a badge made of tin because that's oh, the, and that's why they're called nice. Tin Men. Yeah, yeah. Oh, very good. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of political turmoil going on. There's like you know, there's which like, is such great fuel for like rock, for rock musicians. Band, yeah. yeah, they've got something to kick against. They've got something to protest. They've got something to cheer for. And this is clearly working well in uh, in Lizzie's uh, in Lizzie's music. She, I mean, she's like the protest generation. It's it's very interesting. Like the book is almost like you're not sure if it's like in the sixties, in the eighties, or in the aughties. The in, noughties. In, in the noughties. I, I like to call it. It's hard to tell because I, I, I see a lot of parallels with. Uh, it's uh, it's very anachronistic and anarchic. This book. Yeah. What's anarchic? Anarch- oh, as in anarchic. As in anarchist. Yes. Oh, it's an, an anachronistic book. Oh, I'm going to stumble over that one. <laughs> well, where did you get to the chapter where she sells seashells? shells by the seashore. Oh, go for that. <laughs> and, her, and, her, and her uncle, the pheasant plucker. Oh, dear. But he and has her cousin. Son. Oh, yeah. the, the pheasant plucker's son. But he's only plucking pheasants until the pheasant plucker comes. Uh, uh, with, with all of this fresh material under their arm and the sheet music for the next hit after Treble in Paradise, they go to the label's offices to accept Nellie Wilson's invitation mm. and be introduced to... The label is run by, by a group of people who, who really sweat the details. They're very concerned with the, the success of the label and the completion of, of all of its goals. They're in constant state of, of, of worry. So this executive group is known as the Fret Board. Uh-huh. Yes, they're they're a very concerned bunch. They it's worry. Exactly. They seem to worry a lot, and like you said, like a lot of attention. A bit of micromanagers, and yeah, <laughs> led by the paranoid uh, Johnny Credit. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Uh, also an erstwhile musician, much like uh, Nellie Wilson. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of those going on there, yeah. They're immediately interested in signing these young upstarts straight out of college, quit your quit your degrees, yep. and seize the opportunity because music is what's going to be your career. Like, you don't need social, cultural, anthropology, or... No, who needs that? Let's like, make, we're going to make you the star that you were going to be. Just drop out, do your things. It's, it's, it's even worse than they tend to do with, with the sports guys. They, they t- oh, yeah. They tend to get uh, lured away, but there's very strong regulations about that these days where I think the major teams are not, are not actually allowed to lure someone out of college. I think that's why you've, got, yeah, why you've much, got college sports. Right, yeah, which is pretty much a requirement that they f- they've yeah. finished their degree before they're allowed to go play Unpaid. for the major teams. Yes, mm-hmm. interestingly enough, that's like something we saw in the recent times. So apparently a lot of universities were uh, complaining about their uh, lack of income due to uh, the fact that uh, no uh, college uh, Football or baseball yeah, was being played. Yeah, that's a curious thing. And it turns it? out that they're sports institutions with a learning problem on the side, rather than. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. There are stadiums masquerading as uh, hmm. houses of learning. Just look at it. In I think something like forty of the fifty U.S. states, the highest paid public official is coach. Is a coach for yes. a university or college sports team. It's, but it's ridiculous. <laughs> this is the world we live in, and it's the world that they've got to make a living in. And Lizzie and the Gilmore. Girls, they seize the opportunity with uh, with both hands. Yep, uh, uh, skyrocketing. They, they, they to, signed a contract with both hands, uh, which is a weird, like little formality that they make them do. That but was weird, right? Well, and they have to write it in mirror script. Yeah, one, as one, well. one regular one mirror script, which is, and then one gets filed and one gets fed into the fireplace. It was it was very confusing. It was. Well, I mean, we'll find out later. I mean, we, you can see what kind of mayhem it uh, works up to later if you just look at the cover. Yes, exactly. And it, but it, it, our heroes are not aware of just how much trouble they're in. They're, they're so overjoyed at the sudden promise of success. That yes, they're being drawn from uh, playing a little small-time college venues like Madame's Organ uh, and uh, being thrown into sports arenas yeah. playing for the masses. At first, opening for, for other acts. I mean, that is a, a good way to gain right. some favour yes, of your f- own. The, the, the first time they go on tour with the Smashing Bumpkins. And- <laughs> yeah. And and shortly after that, like when that turns out to be extremely successful, the label decides to rebrand Lizzie and the Gilmore Girls and encourages them through their various producers to move to uh, a, a new hip genre of Irish infused uh, 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 rock that they call uh, sham rock. Oh yes, <laughs> um, I like that. Yeah, I thought so too. I, I thought it was a bit of a red flag that they should have noticed that it is definitely well, a sham. But well, they get, it's still rock, and they get it's to still open rock up. and roll to me. <laughs> (laughs) (laughs) Yes. 
<laughs> and they get to open for for luminaries that uh, uh, some of whom that they seem familiar to me. Uh, uh, Paula Abdulu, yes, <laughs> and Ja Rulu. Uh, there was a I think it's a power metal band called Tulu, and uh, <laughs> like they were very like diversified in their in their interest. Like they even joined a little country singer like uh, with a beautiful voice uh, uh, named Julu. <laughs> And until they finally launched their first studio album, Back to Skulu. Oh, dear. <laughs> yes, I wasn't quite sure with that. They're, which they're being rushed through. There's, yeah, right. Like, I mean, she insists, like, no, we have to put out an album and we can't just keep on touring. But turns out they're being, like, thrust into the political campaign where uh, they're told that there's going to be a concert at the Mall. At the Mall? At the Mall, the Mall, I don't know, the Mall, I think it's pronounced Mall. Which which one are we talking about? That's exactly the problem. Lizzie uh, <sighs> presumes that it's going to be the the mall <laughs> at the in, in the center yeah. in, in in the center of uh, Washington, but yes. no, it, turned, it turns out to be at the Mall of America. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> where they are? Where, where they are meant to show up? I mean, they're, they're, they've got a man by the name of uh, Peter Gladriel, uh, who is uh, <laughs> yes, he went into the Western and diminished. Exactly, he, dis- <laughs> he uh, disappeared. And they're working on the concert, and they're having a quick break while the Tin Lady is. Riling up the troops, so to speak. Oh, uh, yeah. Where they managed to whip everyone into a fervor. Uh, this is actually in the first point in the book where we see one of the uh, staunchest supporters of the Tin Lady, a, a, a group known as the Loud Boys, who are... Yeah. Uh, um, and they're uh, wearing all these red hats. And Yep, yep. And they're uh, coming up and they've, they're all uh, equipped with their uh, tactical megaphones. Uh, <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, and oh. they're the, the supporters for the Tin Lady. Again, what they lack in class... They make up in volume. <laughs> As yeah, they this say, sounds familiar. <laughs> as they said in German, and this one's just for our German-speaking listener, das war nicht schön, aber schon laut. It's a very good... Uh, it wasn't pretty, but it was pretty loud. Yep, yeah, there you go. They, they have a lot of uh, things like that in Germany. Oh, they're so good. Like, I think my my favourite one is especially when it comes to uh, uh, drinking alcohol. It's, oh, yeah. It's, it's mäßig, aber regelmäßig. <laughs> Which is with measure, but regularly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, not too much, but frequently. My favorite German expression is Drachenfutter, and it's like uh, dragon Drachen food or dragon feed. And it's like a gift that you buy for someone that you know is angry f- with you. Oh, nice. In order to try and placate them. Like, uh, actually not just make them feel guilty or like, you know. No, it's like you, you're coming home late, and so you buy flowers to ah, apologize okay. yeah, for yeah, them. Yeah. And then Dra- Drachenfutter. Yeah, Drachenfutter, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, they have some amazing expressions in German. Now, unfortunately, none of these linguistic marvels uh, uh, are can, in the book. <laughs> can help. No, maybe one day we'll read the German translation. But yes, she ends up in the dressing room when the lights go out. So she can just like tell by the light shining on the door that there's something something written on on the mirror. Yeah. And and, and she reads it and it's it's three times it's the same word three times. It's shamon, shamon, shamon. And <laughs> after she does she there's this like terrifying vision appears in the mirror, an apparition by the name of El Hee. He. <laughs> Yes, yes. At which point she realizes she's in deep trouble. Yeah, the book lost me at this point, but uh, I, I stuck with it. And I, I'm glad that I did because she experiences a lot of what I was experiencing. Like a, 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 a nether world of untold possibilities and horrors is revealed to her that she can barely understand. Mm. As, she, as she realizes that so many of the influences on her life that she thought was just just like benignly evil, right. like uh, capitalism, like the fretboard, she starts to realize that a lot of them are like scaly and slimy in the literal sense. The shells almost literally fall from her eyes and as she starts w- wandering through the uh, venue in a daze, she like sees the true nature of all these people. Uh, yeah. Uh, she, and, and, she sees the horrors that they are, the various other acts that there are, like uh, Paula Abdul who has like these weird, she's very squamous and... Uh, and she does a lot of jogging but she's really quite lazy about it so yeah. uh, uh, her nickname is Jog Slog Thoth. Yes, that's... <laughs> We've seen before. She's kind by of the way. slogging around the, the places. Yeah, there there may be a connection to that one that was at a comic convention that was uh, that was invaded, if you'll recall, because uh, oh, there was another the, book we did, didn't we? Yeah, where we also saw one of the other great old ones that is uh, uh, that has been siphoning the energy off of their opening act. A Julu is actually snarl at Hotep. Uh, yes, <laughs> yeah, she's like like a, a mummified form of a per, of a person that uh, yes. that, that is just like sort of shambling <laughs> around the stage, and she realizes all this just as she's opening for. The greatest act that she's, she's ever uh, opened for so far, Cthulhu, yes. <laughs> alternately known as Shub N Word Wrath. <laughs> 
questions. It's, yeah, it's, it's like, a bit of a struggle, I thought. But it's, it's, it's hard to get hard to wrap your uh, yes. tongue around. But I guess that's what we get with the el- these eldritch horrors, which are right. clearly feeding on the energy of the masses to propel themselves into this world. And uh, she realizes that the tin lady is just the thin edge of the edge of the wedge. Yes, uh, yeah, the tip of the spear to penetrate our world and seize power. And yeah, do so by taking over the the greatest government on earth or something along those lines. Now, as a rocker, she knows that she has the power to protest. Uh, and she does so immediately by, by making sure that her next song that she's been asked to write for a, a popular film will, will reveal all these monsters to the masses. Unfortunately, yeah. the film that she's supplying this music for is Ferris Bulu's Day Off. Ah, yes. And it's son- censored to the point of unrecognizability. Yes. And now they know, the fretboard know that, that she's onto them. Yes, the song she wrote for that was called Penis Flytrap. And it was a bit like, <laughs> it was beeped out so much people thought it was EDM. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and yeah, they manufactured a, a scandal for her to be cancelled over. She was, uh, well, as a guitarist, I mean, it is it is pretty outrageous when you're caught fingering A minor. Ah, uh, well, yes, that's... It's a false accusation. It never is. never finger A minor. So even the greatest evil, when they know that their enemy has to be defeated, and when they've, like, manufactured these scandals and, like, undermined her career, even these great old ones are bound by contractual obligations and so I mean that's always the case with these things if, as long as you the loopholes and if you know the long the small letters and so while they would certainly love to just dump her in a pit they, they and never see craft. her again <laughs> love, love to craft a scenario yes that's right where they dump her in a pit and never see her again she is billeted for the <laughs> for the on- inauguration concert because ah, it yes, turns out that right. was that was in her contract all along when they originally signed her they wanted to make sure that they had her for the ride and so the inauguration concert for the tin lady after she defeats Tony Blyer yes uh, is in her contract and so she doesn't not just have the obligation but also the right to play there yes she uses the power of social media at this point she has a loyal fan base who who, did, who understand yeah. that she was misled she gets on her computer which is obviously Adele and <laughs> yes <laughs> sends, a, sends an email all to her loyal followers to come and show up at the Washington Monument which uh, she has uh, learned is a big uh, psychic amplifier uh, for the uh, inauguration concert for the tin lady after she's won the election. Basically, but she says will be brought will be seen by more people than any inauguration ever, ever despite before, the fact that everyone can see that. It ev- anyone anywhere, but then, and, and like the, the plan is to get the the psychic energy of all the people there and all the people watching together to b- finally make the final breakthrough. Yes, to to devour all that yeah. that psychic energy and love and and finally open the the portal to the realm of the the the, the deep the deep well the, the deep state? ones the deep, there, one, oh, the deep state ones oh god <laughs> I did not want to go there <laughs> why is this book so improvisational I, I guess the tea fraggers had a lot to do with that <laughs> <laughs> which actually I think brings us to the front cover of the book which is the big showdown yes uh, you've got the loud boys and their tactical microphones which are being bashed in upon by the uh, by, by Lizzie's uh, actual original fan base from back in her college days yes and it's, uh, like I mean she she was really cool. Her new work is like too mainstream and conformatist, but like the, her original work still rings a bell with the, the yes. grassroots movement. Exactly the, the grassroots movement. Yeah, they're, they're tearing the grass up from its from roots. its roots when they when they see that that Lizzie's returning to the pretty innovative genre that she started back in college that made her so so popular. This, uh-huh. this sort of classically infused uh, rock known as uh, uh, hard bock. <laughs> And because she is the ultimate Baroque bitch. She is a, she is a very Baroque bitch, yeah. She does the hair. She knows how to play Madame's organ. And speaking of hair, she's joined by, her. turns out, her longtime fans, a band that she was a great fan of, uh, Bark of Seagulls. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> uh, and together they play a, a duet that brings the house down, Bark That Ass Up. The tin lady's ass is being backed up, and uh, she's being like <laughs> yeah, smashed. That's, that's how it was. That was written in the book. I thought that was a curious way to end the story. She's being backed up in, into the nether realms, and like I think the, the nuclear missiles on the front cover are more, more like the threat allegorical that is, threat right? that is hanging yeah. over the thing rather than actually because there's no nuclear missiles in the book. But the book cover rarely has anything to do with what's actually going on in the book yes, itself. Yes, just like the minutes of a meeting should not be like a reductive. The, the minutes of a meeting. 
thing are what one would have said with the benefit of hindsight. Yes. <laughs> what one would have wanted to have been said, said. With the benefit of hindsight, yes. Which is this powerful thing. If you, can re- if you can write the minutes and you've got a lot of power over how the meeting went. Now, of course, one single concert is never enough to defeat the forces of, of evil. And while they've been dealt a terrible blow, the label still exists. The fretboard, yeah. yes, they're all dumped into the pit, but there will soon be others to, uh, to there replace is, them. There is always more of them. There's like it's, It is a never-ending battle against the forces of evil, the, uh, the old ones, the old powers. Yeah. You, you can drive them back, but after a while, it always rears its ugly head back again because there's always the doubt people have and the, the fear that is easily played upon. Regrettably so. But as long as we have like heroes like Lizzie Gilmore and the Gilmore girls and her mer- various fans and the allies that she's made along the way, like they, they managed to seize a boat, uh, uh, the ship that rocked. Oh, yes. Uh, and, and they sail off into the, uh, into the horizon while all of them <laughs> harmonize on the high seas. <laughs> yeah, got it in there. It is. <laughs> I thought this was a fantastic book. It is. Uh, I, I mean, of all the books that we've had that featured some of the great old ones, some of these great old ones came in the, uh, oh, what was the one? The one that with, the one with the witches. Do you remember oh. that on the Comic Con? Oh, yes. I can see the cover in front of my mind's eye. Yeah, but, right? Yeah, the women with the big hair, the, um, what do you call it, cosplayers? The Maleficent, Maleficent cosplayers. Maleficent cosplayers, yes. that's the one, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but also the uh, the one with the, the little beach community where I didn't even catch on. Oh, that, yes. That it was, late. Yes, that was the, uh, 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 what's his beauty again that was uh, involved? There? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I, uh, I, I, I guess there was, uh, I guess it should have mixed a tonic instead of a gin. Ah, <laughs> yeah. In order, in order to get it now, but I think this one came together very it well. It did. It's like I l- enjoyed this book. I was. I thought it was a shame that we never got to see Peter Galadriel. Like I really wanted him it, to. Like it was a bit of a throwaway character. I think a little the... bit. Yes, it's <laughs> yes. it's how it goes. Uh, uh, but maybe he's off touring with the Smashing Bumpkins, which I thought were very cool. Yeah. Hey, the Smashing Bumpkins. That reminds me of another book that we've done. Yes. Uh, way back when, also about uh, like a little monster band. Do you remember when they're uh, uh, a little country band that signs a contract in blood? And then they all start turning into monsters. Do you oh, remember? Oh, yes. That's, that's a fairly early one. I think that's, that's like episode 18 or something like that. That's hey, a long time the, ago. For the readers at home, because unfortunately my memory has been wiped, check out the show notes and we'll, let you, we'll link you to these other episodes that we've been mentioning. Uh, because they really are, they were quite good. But I think this one was better. I, I, I really liked uh, Nellie Wilson, who was just like such a great character. <laughs> so she big. was like, yeah, she was just like completely. She was I there. She, she was, vanished into a in, haze of weed. It, well, that's like what someone called. Will Nelly Wilson would do, isn't it? My genuinely favorite joke is, I think, not a joke. It's the Miami University of Ohio, which actually exists. It's like, <laughs> how can I? How can that be my favorite uh, gag here? It's, it's one of those things. So I've got an idea. We are. I, I would rate this book at two minutes till midnight. Whoa! Oh, that's a pretty high rating. It is like twenty three fifty eight out of twenty out of twenty four. Uh, like, yeah. I think. I, I think I entirely. Agree I mean, with you. We can I make feel this to midnight if you want to f- take down. Flailing. This this normally takes longer. I it feel is. like to get there. Do you yeah, like, it's, we're missing like a lot of stuttering and umming and eyeing. And no, you're clearly like I, I. I wish I had my memory. I knew that if I had my memory, I could probably get us there just as quickly as you just I'm, did. But I, I have com- full confidence in that you will be able to do that next time. Uh, uh, so speaking of reviews, if you let me just read the inside of my thigh. Hold on, the outro text is there. This is an inconvenient. Yeah, how I'm just going to have to. How did you even manage to tattoo it there? Is like, well, there's an explanation for how I managed to tattoo it, but that's on the underside of my heel, and I can't see that. Ah, yes, yeah. so that's where you generally write the instructions for pouring water out of a boot. If but- you look down at your podcast device, then you should be able to see. Like, you can finger our little star and maybe <laughs> leave a review. <laughs> Okay, I must be reading that's that wrong. A, that's but, a spicy little... Uh, so come on, leave us a review and finger our little stars and... Uh, all five of them, if you can. <laughs> yes, like. exactly. You've got five fingers. God. Good podcast. And, so what do we have in store for our readers next week? And you can week? reach us on... Oh, yes. ...at Cover My Asscast on Twitter or at CoverMyAskCast at gmail.com because we're Cover My Asscast everywhere. Yes, that's the right way to say it. So what do we have in store for our readers next week? It's talking about fingering stars... <laughs> Next week's book is by Chuck Tingle, shared by the Chocolate Milk Cowboys. Whoa, that about covers it. Thank you for joining us at Cover My Ass, where baffling books are reviewed but not read by yours truly. My name is Kaki. And I'm Kay. And remember, we only only judge a book by its cover. Chuck Tingle's books are like these amazing marvels of... Have you actually read one? Yes, I have. Oh, okay. There's even a, there's even a podcast called Pounded in the Butt by my own podcast, where 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 different like internet celebs have to read an entire book 
of Joe Tingle with someone that they know in the room. Ooh. 